All right, here's the video of the 95 Volvo 850 turbo wagon. First and pretty popular is the GT500 hood vent. See, it does sit good on the hood there. Front end, hard bumper. Hard bumper I pulled from a car in the junkyard, and the only reason I put it on there was just for the looks. The factory bumper was in good shape, uh, but it's now been <clears throat> traded off to somebody that needed it. You can see, I'll try to walk down the side so you can see that there's no dents or anything, and I'll stop along the way. 17-inch uh, rims. The tires are... Venezia's. I thought they were Nexons, but they're Venezia's. They're also uh, 215 45 17 and not a 215 50. Uh, it's got the 302 millimeter brake upgrade, slotted rotors in the front, um, new pads. The calipers also have been clearanced uh, with a grinder, so you actually can use the 16 inch wheels on these. Uh, they will spin without rubbing the calipers. It also has the Coney Yellows in the front. Uh, which are not more than a just a couple of months old. They were on sale a little ways back. You've seen the pictures of the struts on my page anyways. So. Down the side. Here's the spot in front of the wheel wells I was talking about with the uh, rock chip stuff. I tried to take it off and it actually got down through the finish down it's down to the primer in a couple spots no bare metal here though back tire back brakes are new pads and rotors uh, just stock size nothing special about them again same size tires does have a spot on the body right here uh, looks like been there as long as I've owned it it looks like it actually got hit with an egg or something at some point in time just the way the, the paint is cracked and whatnot looks like the an egg strike I've had one of those before but again this has been on there since before since <clears throat> I've owned it we'll picture the roof no problem with the paint on the roof uh, it did come with racks on it and I swapped the racks out for the smooth top rails all those holes have been filled so there's no water leaks tail end here the brake lights have been I replaced them uh, the factory ones were all foggy and crappy looking. These have a really a beautiful, almost brand new finish to them. <clears throat> Here's a spot in the back where the emblems were, where they came off. Um, and it took some of the paint with it, left marks. Again, like I said, I was originally just going <clears> to <throat> plastic dip the car. Here's the other emblem spot here. So I wasn't too worried about it. But if you want to you know, keep it silver, you'd need to respray that back. Uh, the back back bumper, I re-blacked the plastic on this stuff, and it needs to be done again, but it's no big deal. I just did it with shoe polish. Some people do it with torch, <clears throat> paint, plastic dip, me and my plastic dip. Uh, the back bumper does have a little bit of paint flaky. Uh, it's been like this for a long time. I have not ever been hit unless my wife bumped into it pulling a driveway or something but she said she didn't so I just think that this is just flexing from previous owner or whatever uh, just paints ended up turning loose so uh, you know the back bumper probably would need to be resprayed <clears throat> see if I can driver's side it has a reasonable sheen on it I mean it could use to be uh, be polished here's this spot here that leading edge I actually sprayed this side with an automotive enamel primer just to make sure there was no surface oxidation gonna happen from peeling that trim off and again this is just plastic dip on the on the pillars I've peeled it off on some of them and left it on there on others interior driver's seat uh, typical wear areas again I do have replacement seats for it but these seats still function actually pretty good what does not function on this particular seat is the tilt mechanism uh, 
been broke ever since I've had it. And from what I read, it's just the cable, the movement cable in the seat pop loose and you have to take the seat all apart to get to it. I just didn't get around to doing that. But the the front back does work. Memory suck, <clears throat> selections do work as well. I do have the uh, 850R sills uh, that I pulled from the junkyard car that I got the uh, front end off of. The keys out here. It's very hot in this car. Open to Florida. Oh, here's this view from the driver's seat. Um, <clears throat> you're obviously familiar with this view, except in mine, I've got the EGT gauge in a vertical position over here on the side next to the light switch in the front center here. Uh, this gauge is the boost gauge, a voltmeter, an oil pressure gauge, and an oil temperature gauge, all done in metric units, so it'll show <clears throat> bar for the boost and bar for the PSI and stuff like that. However, volts is just a standard standard gauge. And then the Innovate AFR gauge, all wires are run down uh, through here, very, very accessible, very easy place to run wires through. Uh, this little white panel here is my conversion gauge for, this would be your metric units of temperature and this is the Ferriso Celsius and Fahrenheit, in other words, for the conversion for the oil temperature. So I'm not good enough to do all that math in my head. Uh, nothing special here. I did take the factory radio, opened it up, and soldered in a phono plug so you can hook your phone up to it and listen to your, you know, through Pandora or whatever, through the stereo, through all one speaker of it. <laughs> uh, shifter. gears work fine and i'll start it up unfortunately i can't take it for a drive today i will start it up and let it run and whatnot but i'm here by myself my wife and kids are out of town for the next couple days but i want to go ahead and get this video to you um <clears throat> anyway some interior picks passenger seat pretty decent a uh, whole lot better than the driver's seat like i said i do have two seats to go uh the back seat Looks pretty good. Uh, this is actually my daughter. That's a sticker. Don't worry. That's nothing. It's just come right off. These sheets probably need to be, you know, have some leather conditioner put on it, whatever. But uh, the spots in the headliner. Uh, this is a little saggy spot here. And I got a little saggy spot on the uh, sunroof door here. You can see all the little handprints where kids have messed it up and this really aggravates me to death that they did that but they did uh, the sunroof did leak a little bit around the glass when i had it uh, when i first purchased it uh, i did seal it up with a with a clear glass sealer but so these stains are from these stains are i've had the car for almost four years so that's where those stains are from uh, it absolutely does not leak right now and like I said, I haven't opened it in a while because the motor has been acting very slow like and I don't want it to get stuck in the open position. So, <clears throat> do a quick start up. Now this car, all these manual transmissions, they do not have clutch safety switch. So you either need to push that clutch in or keep it neutral. I prefer to keep it in neutral because what happened to me one time was I actually pushed the clutch in but had it in gear and my pushing of the clutch in actually popped the seal on the clutch slave cylinder and so when I started it it, it it obviously lurched forward because the clutch had not been disengaged and it was in gear so I like to take it out of gear ever since that happened and just give her a turn and she starts right up the air conditioner blowing on me here a little bit uh, as you can see up here while we wait on the gauges, no warning lights on the dashboard, just my parking brake. Uh, I was driving it yesterday and like I said the speedometer has been off and on and it actually is not 93. Um, it was not working yesterday during the drive so obviously with the speedometer not working that means that the odometer is not working i don't know if it's the speed sensor 
or what, but I'm gonna try and take the mileage off the ARD computer and hopefully, I don't know if it had, actually has the capability to record the ARD computer's been in since July of last year when I did this whole turbo and manual transmission swap. So hopefully it'll have an accurate reading of the mileage since then because I did record that mileage uh, when I uh, made all the swap. So as you can see here, I can get a close up for you. Uh, the bolts is in kind of a, yeah, there we go. Bolt uh, right there, oil pressure 4.9 bar, oil temperature is 40 degrees Celsius right now. Give a little rev there. You see that oil pressure builds to six bar, no problem. When it's uh, it's cold. Once it warms up, it usually idles around two bar, uh, but you can rev it just a few thousand RPM, and it'll get, it'll go straight to five, five and a half bar. Uh, as you can see, I'm pulling good vacuum, no vacuum leads. I'm you know, 0.6 bar of vacuum. So I go. Oh, let's do the. Gauge right now, I'm at 290 degrees. Now it's over 3, 340. So it goes up. The highest I've seen it get is around around 900. It's got a an indicator light that'll come on once it gets over, I think 1100 degrees, and it's a bright light. You can't miss it. So just to let you know that EGT gate uh, temperatures are getting up there. So we'll go jump under the hood real quick. This one hand. Ah. Alrighty. And I'm kill the air connection real quick. Obviously, the AC makes it idle up, but I want you to. Basically, the engine compartment is all stock. Um, I did rotate the battery 90 degrees, I had anticipated. I was actually going to build a ram air type setup to go into the factory box, keeping that factory box. And I wanted to do the reverse intercooler piping kit, like I said. But um, all the vacuum lines are rubber. They are all brand new. They've all been replaced. Uh, the brake fluid is ATE blue. Uh, I, change, I do the cap and uh, cap the spark plugs every December of every year. It's just something I do for all my cars. I don't run any platinum. I just run regular old. NGK's in it. Um, what you can't see is underneath that intake manifold, I have actually, uh, you might be able to see it. I've done the PCV kit with a copper tube instead of the plastic tube that comes from uh, SCP and from the factory and all. So the copper tube and a section of a uh, half inch power steering hose, and you will never, ever, ever have a problem with that breaking or rupturing at all. So, as you can see here, I do have the timing cover off. I do have the timing cover to put back on there. I just like having it off because I get to see all the cool stuff spinning around. Uh, the eBay camera plates, tops of the cone of yellows. I keep the little adjuster, uh, adjuster button in the glove box. And down there's the little 19T. Angle flange downpipe, uh, OBX. I've got a DEI header wrap. The whole downpipe is header wrap. Uh, that line you see right there is the EGT gauge. Further down, that first O2 sensor that you see there is for the AFR gauge, and the second one is the factory one. Um, no leaks, no nothing at all. If I point down through here, you can kind of see the the. Uh, Kid pan that I had. I had the opening cut to where I can get to the, the opening cut where I can get to the drain plug for the oil pan and also access to the oil filter. That giant black plug down there is actually the plug for the uh, the AFR gauge. All the rubber hoses have been replaced as far as water hoses. Um, and that's pretty much the underside. You want to see. ARD unit is right in there, and I have had absolutely no problem whatsoever with that ARD unit. Uh, it's been very good to me. I know a lot of people apparently have had problems with them, but I am not one of those people. So that's a little 
I'll go rev it up a couple times real quick. But that's the inside, and once the wife and kids get back in town, I'll be able to take it for a drive for you. So, uh, the one gauge that does not work, by the way, on the inside is this turbo gauge. I took the line off of that gauge to use for this. Uh, I had a problem with that line leaking, so instead of just trying to fix it, because that gauge doesn't show you anything anyways, I just completely did away with it. Uh, if you want to put it back on, it's just a simple vacuum line, hook it back up. So, but, uh... No problems at all. This thing runs like a champ. So, 